Welcome sir, to Bat Rugby League. Today on the agenda we're going to be talking about the video referee system and whether it should stay as it is now. We've had some controversy this weekend in the Challenge Cup with uh, Dan Sargenson's no try after Thomas Lillois tackle which um, has, has caused quite a bit of debate now. Sean, what's your view on this? As a... <laughs> right, the, the thing is, we talk about a debate and a debate sort of implies that there's two strong arguments. I don't think there's a strong argument for it being no try. I think Sean Wayne's tried to come out and um, defend Robert Hicks, but I feel like the more times you watch it, the more the more you realise that he can't make a play of the ball with his arm. Okay, it would be understandable if he went for a pass. And I still don't think he would have been playing for the ball, but it would be understandable if he's gone for a pass and it's hit his arm. You could argue that he's, he's thrown his arm across to, to dislodge the ball. That's not happened. He's hit him. The ball's come loose. And within that tackling sequence, the ball's hit his arm on the way down. And that, that is not a knock-on. You can't play at the ball when you're in a tackle. When your head's in the tackle position, underneath the, the arm, around the ribs, you're not making a, like, a conscious play at the ball. I thought it was a ridiculous, ridiculous decision. Now. And I think video referees, just referees in general, are getting a lot of stick at the minute. And I do agree that sometimes it goes a bit too far. Fans go a little bit over the top and get too aggressive towards referees. But I don't... The, the system's not working at the minute because there's too many controversial decisions not going the right way. I think you look at the Saints Huddersfield game on, on the Sunday as well, it was immediately after the Wigan game, and the Saints last try, which I thought was a bit. I still not understand. Still don't understand what the ruling is there because for me, if his lease is going in, he's making a conscious play at the ball because he's going for the tackle. Whether he's um, obviously kicked it purposely or not, he's made a conscious play at the ball because he's moving towards the ball and the guy that scores a try is in front of him so even if you want to give it an accidental offside that's still not a try and it's quite clearly offside because he stood in front of him in shot of the camera and I'm just confused as as to how these decisions are being given and especially given that the, the first one, the big game went against the ruling on the field so what is the point in the ruling on the field yeah well Chris Olinsky said um, that clip should be beamed around the world showing how exciting our sport is what a tackle Warrington fans were clapping it we're trying to get a new TV deal and entertain the world yet our officials are looking for reasons not to give tries something has to change in a week when sporting drama has been on the front pages we managed to get it completely wrong again and score a massive own goal now for me I think that's the biggest thing with the video ref at the moment. I think they're looking at stuff that long. It's almost as if they're, they're trying to find a reason not to give it. Mm. And the on-field decision, whether it goes up as a trial or no try, is almost becoming meaningless. Now, what's your take on this? Because I personally would do away with sending it up as a trial or no try. I think the ref can give his opinion and say, well, I thought he got it down or I thought that were a knock-on. But it just seems like when it first came in... It took absolutely everything to overturn that decision, but as time has gone on, it doesn't seem to matter now what he gives. Yeah, I agree. I think looking back at the days when referees didn't go square in the air, try, no try, I think decisions flowed better. And I think a massive part of that is since, I think, was it 2007 when the full-time referee system came in as well? I think that's played a part in it as well, maybe. The standard of refereeing in this country. But we look at Summer Bash last year and the trialling that they did there. I think they looked at three key elements when they were using video referee, which was grounding the ball, play was in touch or in goal, and the dead ball line in play. Three of the basics. For me, I think we need to go back to those basics. Look at the grounding, offside, that kind of thing in goal rather than checking all this obstruction, not calling back play. I think once a tackle is complete, you can't look back at what's gone on before that last tackle. And I think it should. That's how I think it should be a free-flowing game. The referee should just go, like they're doing Rugby Union the other code, I think they need to look at it and just get clarification. And the referee talk them through it and go, do you think, given on what I've seen, we should give it? 
or not, I think that's what they need to do. Well, this is the other thing as well. So, when you're sending someone up, the point of the video referee is to get the decision right. Is it not? Is the video referee not fact? Because it's almost as if it depends who the video referee is. Because yeah. a different video referee may have seen that differently and given that try. Uh, you know what? And every club has the referees that they feel don't don't sort of go their way. And I think for Wigan fans, Robert Hicks is the guy. And as soon as Wigan fans knew it was Robert Hicks, so it was, I think Sergeantson's try in the second half was an interesting sort of twist on that because that's going to put a try. And for me. I was I was sort of stood in the crowd and I turned I turned to my mates and I was like I don't think that's a try, like but I can understand like it's gone up as a try the referee's give it as a try, yeah he makes a sort of movement with his arm but you could argue that because the tackle's been rolled over that he's allowed to use his momentum to go forward, uh, but that's that that is literally the use of the fifty fifty so they've got it perfectly right in the second half they've gone right it's try on the field, it's a bit it looks a bit like it could be a double movement but it might not be. He's give a try on the field. I'm gonna give a try. That's how it should be. That's how, how it's supposed to work. But yeah, as as you said, you get these other scenarios scenarios where they just seem to want to make their own mind up, where they're completely ignoring what's happened on the pitch and what the 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 three officials on the field have seen. And we've got written down here. I think the NRL is is where you need to look. You watch an NRL game, you very very scarcely see it go past ten seconds. They'll look at it once. Right, it looks all right. They look at it from another angle. Yeah, it's a try. Right. Or yeah, it's not a try. What? Or I can't tell from those two looks. I'll give whatever he's given on the field. It, that's just how it runs, and that's surely that's how we should be looking to do it. Because if if we just keep looking at it and looking at it and looking at it, the more you just watch something, the more you're gonna try and change your own mind. That's just like the human brain in general. So, do you think we need maybe just one solid video referee like the NRL will do with the bunker? Maybe have say someone like Steve Ganson an experienced referee in the past sat there in having a TV screen throughout and looking at decisions. I know obviously that depends on the TV rights and games and stuff, but if we just had one referee for every TV game, video ref, I think that would work a lot better because mm. then they've got a unified opinion and it's not different video referees yeah. giving their opinion. Yeah, I think that's, that's the best way so. forward, but I think if that was a possibility, I think... Surely that would be in place because mm. does it come down to money why it's not in place? Because there's a lot of people it's argue like we have a video we should have a video ref at every game or not at all. Now I mean, like you say, if it's the same person ruling on everything, it's it's not gonna be no controversy. And I think that's the biggest thing about this is the fact that a different video ref might have given a different decision there because yes, it may have hit Lulawai's hand and gone forward, but is is that a knock on? It, it's probably fifty fifty with some people. And I think the, the the thing is as well we're, we're giving Robert Hicks a lot of sticks in that, stick in that situation for that, but James Child himself's not not blameless because everybody in the ground as as Relinsky says Warrington fans were clapping everybody in the ground saw the tackle and was like oh wow and as, so obviously Wigan fans erupted because sentiment left the field but even Warrington fans were just stood there stunned because it was an amazing tackle. Now James Child has, has has decided to see something that nobody else has seen in the ground, yeah, and sent it up as as a video ref. And I think in some situations, I, I won't say it's all the time, but I've seen some situations, referees like Hicks and Child are using the video ref when they're refereeing a TV game. They're using the video ref as an excuse to not get the decision wrong when they could just go themselves, and ninety percent of the time they'll get it right anyway. Um, I think that's another problem that we have with the video ref, and because we don't have that option to have it in every single game referees are just using what they have to the disposal because they know in other games they're not going to have that chance to, to review it so they're just using it because they can I think if we had it in every single game referees would be more inclined just to back themselves more and more because the, the more to, to see they'll see it as a more consistent and I think one of the things with that is he's obviously he's not given a knock on so if Sargentson runs away gets tackled we're going to score on the next play to try yeah. So he's not yeah. given the knock on during the game. So for exactly. me, that has to be a try. Yeah, I agree. Because if you make, if he's not flagged that knock on, for me, it's a hundred percent a try. And I don't understand why he's. If he doesn't see that on the field and it's the touch judge, meters. the touch judge hasn't even said, "Oh, I didn't see anything either." So based on that, 
you've got James Charles' opinion on the field and then you've got another person's opinion and I think James Child and Robert Hicks need to work together sometimes to taking decisions and I think they all need to work together not just have one body outside interfering with a game so to speak like Robert Hicks did but well I can't think of anything that they can do to fix that at the moment yeah. The, 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 I think the, the big issue overall for the video referee system in this in this country is uh, forgetting about what happened over the weekend. Obviously, they've had two really controversial decisions, and I think they've both gone the wrong way. And that's why they're controversial, I suppose. Um, but the main issues week in, week out with the video referee are that 50 50 decisions aren't going the way of the on field try in some cases, they're going against the on field call, which is against the point of the 50 50. And which you could argue, do you bring back the benefit of the doubt instead? Because I used to give more tries than it, it didn't. And then the, the time it's taking for me the rest of the rest to look at decisions, you were stood for two minutes waiting for the Thomas Little eye knock on decision. And it, the, you can all look at a tackle so many times. Yeah. So, well, what is the solution to that? Because the players have a shot clock, so the video referee maybe have a shot clock? Or only get so many looks at it? I, I, I feel like you. <laughs> it sounds stupid to say, but on restarts, you have two looks, don't you? If the referee think, I'm not sure about that, just check it, this is what I've given, you can have two looks and that's it, so you can have a look at. I think for tries that's a bit extreme, but it's getting to a stage where we're going to have to think about things like that because if they're going to look at it 20 times and still get it wrong, yeah. then why are you looking at it in the first place? Yeah. Also, what I think they should do is the referee should say, specifically look at what I've said, don't look at something else, say, you'll see like... A game where you think, oh, it's a knock-on, there's no knock-on, and then late in the play he looks at obstruction, maybe, and he gives a try for not obstruction, for obstruction, and I think... You had it in the World Cup, when yeah. I think it was Chechen who was refereeing, and Taylor, Taylor was on video ref, and he's gone up to the video ref, and they had a conversation, almost had a conversation, and he was asking, well, oh, is that not a, an obstruction there? And Chechen's like, no, it's not. Ignore it. I've not seen it. It's, it's play on. Yeah. And the video ref's gone, on. Oh, right, OK and give the try because that's and that's they, what he asked him to exactly. look at so th this is what I'm asking you to look at that's fine I've, I've let it go I just want you to look at this and maybe that's another way of looking for, going forward yeah well there's certainly a number of solutions guys what do you think um, did you think it were a try uh, how do you think we should combat this should we have a video ref at every game or should we have them not at all should there be a shot clock uh, don't forget to like subscribe and let us know in the comments